If all goes to plan, we're going. All right. All right. I've got the pleasure to talk with George Bennett. We've known each other a couple of years, but we've never really done a terribly formal interview. We've done a few finish line grabs, and mm. you're quite an entertaining bloke. You're also racing your bike pretty well these days. Sometimes. Um, I don't know how well at the moment, but... Um, oh, I think I've just dropped my microphone. That's all right. We'll solve it. Um, yeah, on the back of getting relatively smashed at the Nationals, I'm looking for some confidence. <laughs> no, it's... Um, yeah. I've never sat in a chair in front of Ride Media before, so... Years ago, I kept saying to you um, before a race, look, I've backed you today, today's your day. Mm, and then a couple of years ago, you went and won the Tour of California and you proved me right. That was a, a lesson in perseverance on my behalf because you're always knocking on the doors and now you're knocking on the door of a top 10 or, dare I say, a top 5 of a GC result in a Grand Tour. Do you feel like that's the rider you've become? Yeah, I mean, I've... I've sort of stolen a couple of top tens in the grand tour which has been good top five seems like a like i feel like if you're just persistent and don't crash you can get a top 10 if you you have to be right really quite good to be top five and uh yeah i mean uh, there's there's a few little things that sort of stop me i think well major things like obviously the side side stitch shit that's still going on that's the which one side stitch tell me about it You've eaten lots and gone for a run? Yeah, yeah okay, that's, yeah. Yep. You, you get I get that. that really badly just when I go hard on a bike, so that, it sucks. I mean, I had a number of operations, I've had four operations now for various things, trying to like figure it out. In your guts? Yep, yep. Um, nerve ablations and like median cruciate ligament dissections and endoscopies, laparoscopies, um, oh, cr crazy stuff, all sorts of stuff and no answers. Oh. Yeah, so that's that's massively limiting. I mean, like, like the time trial at Nationals to say last week, you know, you, you can do a good first lap and then it starts coming on pretty badly and then you sort of limp home and your power drops off and you kind of just, you know, it's kind of like a, just a ceiling. Yeah. But, um... And is it like a cramp sensation? Or yeah, it's like, well, it's more like, you, it's just a stitch. It's like you're it getting stabbed. Stitch. It is a stitch. It's the stitch. Oh. But no one knows what the stitch is. No one knows if it's like gastrointestinal or if it's trapped nerves or cramps or ischemia or any, no one knows what the like the etiology of a stitch is so it's like pretty hard to solve I think it's because it doesn't kill anybody so they don't really research it you know they can yeah, yeah. like you know they'll, there's a huge amount of research goes into uh, you know fixing sort of heart issues or whatever but like the stitch just, just slow down and it goes away <laughs> if it was, that's not really an option and yeah, yeah, pro athlete. Yeah, and someone's yeah. paying you to paying you to race your bike. You kind of got to keep going. So it's uh, that's niggly, but I we we're close. Hopefully, to something. We have to be, you know, and just the process of elimination. We've been working on it for five, six years. Um, I'm no doctor, but is it exacerbated by uh, anxiety, nerves? You know? No, I don't have it. I I don't get nervous. It's weird. I don't. I I almost can't remember last time I was nervous. Team time trials, I do get a little bit nervous. I think that's because I have the risk of like crashing everybody. But like literally since I was, um, I used to get quite nervous on the mountain bike. Like I used to get, but I, I don't. Racing or just riding? Just racing, yeah, only racing. I think it's because the start was so important. Okay. But like on a, on a road bike, like I think it's because you, it, you do 85 days of racing a year. It's yeah. a long time to be nervous for. And it's a tour, you know, 200k stage or whatever. What are you going to do? Be nervous for six hours? You'd be ruined before you even start. So I think like, I just I on the road bike I've I've never really been nervous. So um, there's none of that. It's just straight something doesn't work and something's yeah okay. essentially wrong with me. So when you solve the stitch, you'll win the Tour de France. Um. Well, is that just as simple as that? Putting words in my mouth, but <laughs> 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 no, uh, I. I don't think it's as simple as that, but it would definitely help go close, you know? Okay. Like, I do think it does have an effect in terms of, like... Like, I feel like last year in the Vuelta, I had the stitch so bad that there became a point when I looked at the road book, and I was like, oh, I'm going to have it on this mountain, this mountain, this mountain. You know, like, for yeah. every stage, and you're like, can I actually deal with that? Like, I had it really bad in the Giro, but I was just so, like, optimistic that it was the last time I was going to have it, and I could, you know... So you got to, if you're not optimistic... You, you struggle to push through it you know what I mean mm -hmm. 
but at the moment I'm pretty optimistic we're working on some new stuff in New Zealand with some nerves and things like that so um, yeah with high optimism I'm probably prepared to suffer through the stitch for another week and, okay. and give it a <laughs> <laughs> So getting back to it, you, you you are maturing. I mean, you're not. Yeah, yeah. You're not I the mean, young kid anymore. Nah, nah. What? Well, if you define it by age, then no. And I I was pro pretty young, but I was also pro like really soon after starting cycling. Yeah. So I didn't really know what I was doing. So I guess like. How quickly? Well, I got on the road bike prop. I turned. I gave up the mountain bike when I was seventeen. And well, you know, became a full road cyclist you know 17 18 and then i was pro by 20 i'd signed the contract when i was 20 or 21 21 and that's because managers were bashing your door down and you had no option or how did it work no i just i just went to france i raced a couple of years amateur and then i went to livestrong and i did two races with them and the sec you know or the third race i did with them it was a big european amateur race climbing race and i got second and and straight away they rang me the next day and said, "Do you want a job?" And I was like, oh, "Sweet, yeah, let's go." <laughs> and that was—it was just—it was awesome. And like, I don't regret. I don't think it was that I was too young pro or something like that. I just think I didn't know what I was doing when I turned pro, and I didn't like. Oh, like you're not gonna. I'm not gonna blame that I was mismanaged or something like that. I just didn't. You know, like I didn't come from a cycling background. No one else in my family rode. Mm-hmm. And I had some awesome guidance when I was in New Zealand from from great people, but that was six weeks of the year. The rest of the time I was in in Europe, and like, uh, yeah, it was it was just it was just strange. I when I look back at like what I did wrongly and what I um what I do now compared to then. I mean, but I also think there's it's like I was saying, it's, if it's defined by your age, then I'm or when you turn pro, then I've been around a while, I guess. But um. I think how long you've been cycling for is a big thing. You know, like these guys, I was talking to my teammates the other day and they're talking about they were racing when they were seven. And I was like, holy shit, when I was seven, I don't think I could ride a bike. Like, I was just, I don't know, digging well, holes. Did play rugby? Yep, I actually did. You did? Started when I was five. Ouch, okay. Yeah. I would not like to see you try and tackle an all black. Oh, no, nah, well, you'd see me. Snap. Yeah, you'd probably see my arm fall off and, um, yeah, I think I was a bit bigger, or maybe just relative to everybody else. I think cycling kind of, I don't know if it stunts your growth, but it definitely didn't help me expand. Okay. But yeah, I was playing rugby, started five through to, I mean, I was still playing rugby. My last game I played in seventh form, so I was 17 years old. Right. Played my last game of footy. But, okay. Um, in what position? Open side, flanker. Okay. Yeah. Fast? No. Nope. Okay. Not fast, not skillful. big, not particularly skillful. Okay. So it was a... a <laughs> <laughs> no, I was, I mean, I was, I was... So you were ostracised from New Zealand, they said, get out. Yeah, get out of here, go, go to, to Europe. Yeah, they got rid of me. Okay. No, I was, like, I was playing at a, you know, like, I stopped making, like, the representative teams, I think, under 14s or under 15s was my last time, and then I kind of just did it for schoolboy rugby, didn't make the firsts, and then went to cycling. <laughs> And mountain biking just because you live in New Zealand, bro? Yep, yep. Mountain biking because it was sweet as. Yeah. Did some jumps. Um, Did you skids as well? No, they were for kids. Okay. Strictly for kids. Okay. So I didn't do any skids. Um, So sick air. Where where were your trails? Aniseed Valley. There was one Aniseed Valley. One sweet trail I did just right by my house. Richmond Hills. There's a track I spent like four years helping to build. You're gonna have to do some geography for me. Is this North Island, South Island? Oh, top of the South Island. Top of the South Island. Yeah, Nelson. Okay. Nelson. Nelson. So there's actually awesome trails there. I'd say like ideal. Actually, now I think we have the best trails in the Southern Hemisphere. We have. We it's have a this. Big claim. Well, it is a big claim, but it's actually like you know, quite warranted. You know, everything that's best in the Southern Hemisphere is actually meant to be in Australia. Well. So you're sort of pushing the the, the friendship here. I'll tell you what, though, because the reason there's actually not like one of those outrageous claims. We do have all the Nelson tracks, but we just had this million, oh, billionaire potentially that, that came and built this private park. It was amazing, okay. and it just wasn't getting enough use, so he just donated it to the club, and it's now it's called the Gorge, and it's just sick, like the best tracks. And then we have all the, it's just it's just like everybody in Nelson now, like 
rides mountain bikes and drinks craft beer. It's like, that's just what you do. You drink. They don't get tattoos or? Um, I don't know if you have to get a tattoo. Okay. I think it, a lot of people do go for the tattoo, but um, yeah, you do have to drink craft beer and you do have to have like a enduro mountain bike. Yeah. Um, knee pads, baggies, that kind of setup. Yeah, okay. oh, I can't even run. run. So never riding lycra on the no, mountain. No, 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 no. It's no, like no. a sin. Well, I, that's what I like about the mountain biking community. I turn up at Threadbone yeah, and I'm, I can put on my kit. They don't. They don't. They, they don't give it that. Yeah, they, they they're pretty open to my to my lycra. But um, yeah, it's it's a very cool place for us. They were my trails. So did I can't remember what we were talking about, but yeah, I did just mountain biking. Oh, mountain biking. So yeah, I did mountain biking, and I I was. Um, not fast enough on the on the cross country because it was just became like so explosive okay. and and like you had to really put power down on rough surfaces and stuff so i ended up when i was in italy for the world i ended up riding around on the on the roads and just falling in love with italy i'm saying like this is amazing you got the the dolomites and stuff and then the next year i came back um as a road cyclist and the, and the rest is history well it's history in the making yeah well yeah that was quite a while it was so it was 10 years ago, 2009. That is quite a long time, actually, 10 years. But yeah, I still think I'm relatively, like, young in age. You know, like those guys that hit puberty when they're, like, 10 and they have a beard and stuff? Like, this is me at, sort of, day three or something. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm really not um, physically old. Yeah. So I'm hoping that means I'll be able to go along like I really enjoy cycling and I find it like quite a sustainable career option like a lot of people think like oh I can only do this for five years or something but I, I, I like it I like I, I think it's such a cool lifestyle and if I like honestly if I could fix this side stitch thing I would have no worries in cycling like that's basically the only thing I worry about you may be the happiest bloke in the peloton oh no no I'm quite no, I definitely wouldn't say that. No. Who's the happiest bloke in the peloton then? Probably Bewley, Sam Bewley. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's pretty, he's just, uh, he's just cruising, eh? He's, he's doing, he lives a very balanced life. I he's think. He's Columbia, hangs out with Esteban. Yeah, he does a good makes thing. Makes people happy. Yeah, I think he's, he's very committed to being just an awesome teammate, so he doesn't take the, mm-hmm. whereas I think like, um, you know, GC riders as such, we lock ourselves at, the top of mountains and we train 35 hours a week sometimes and i'm not saying that they don't do that but i'm saying being a gc rider you probably think twice about you know having a couple of beers after a you, you, you just end up going a bit more on the knife edge i'd say or a bit more sort of self-limiting um for the record i did offer george a beer before this interview and he declined yeah and, just so. and it's 40 degrees outside so i didn't want to slam my words <laughs> Start spilling secrets on the camera, um, but you yeah, know, I think like I think that like the really hap- like I, I mean I am very happy in cycling, but I wouldn't say I'm the ride around the peloton laughing at everybody like in, in in with a number on or whatever. It's definitely like race on, and but I think that makes me happy doing that. If you know what I mean. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, it was, I don't know. It's 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 probably something I don't really think about too much if I'm no. just. But yeah, well, but in general, the lifestyle in terms of um, not waking up and going somewhere to work or what well, you know what I mean, like just yeah. this is my day, and as long as I do my training and I do all this, I'm actually got like a lot of freedom. And then at the end of the day, when you're basically, you know, the the, the mission is to be as relaxed as possible. What do you do? Um, I play a lot of music, a lot of guitar. You play guitar. Yep. Okay. What's uh, what tunes? Metallica. No, I, I really like Metallica, but I don't actually play almost any Sorry, Metallica. Yeah. Um, Dobbin. No, I don't play much. Like <laughs> You're not that wounder that sits around the campfire and strums <laughs> Dave Dobbin. No, I don't. Um, what do I, I? I just play a lot of sort of blues riffs and, okay. and stuff. It depends what guitar I'm playing. Okay. Um, yeah. So you and Jesse Sargent could get together and have a band. No, you have com- you have confused Jesse Sargent with Jack Bauer, maybe, who plays the bass. No, Jesse plays the drums. Luke Durbridge taps the drums every now and then. Oh, listen to this. Okay. Who else plays music? Who plays trumpet? No. No? I don't think we'd have a horn section in the band. No, you know, the I don't know who's got a good set of pipes. Um, 
Yeah, I don't know any singer that any cyclist that could sing. But I think there's a few that hack away on a guitar like me. I reckon Adam Blythe would be there. You put a microphone in front of him. Voice of an angel. No, I don't know, just the confidence, you know, he'd oh. probably put his head back, you know, gallery oh, style. You're thinking of Arctic Monkeys or something. Yeah, someone like that, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Not necessarily a great voice, but a good entertainer. Okay, yeah, that'll do. Yeah? Um, do, you, do you concur? Yeah, I don't know Blythe well enough. Oh, okay. But, okay. Um, I think a cyclist band would be something I'd probably try and avoid pretty... <laughs> <laughs> pretty intensely. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, but no, I play music. Um, when I'm in New Zealand for the last few weeks, played a lot of cricket, which has been good. Just okay. not, not no, structured no, beach cricket. cricket. Beach well, yeah, backyard cricket. Tennis ball. No, nah, we play with a um, incredible. So or two options. You've got like a rubber cricket ball, so it's still got a seam, still get a bit of turn, or you've got a, a like a tennis ball with one side oh, fully, yeah, yeah. fully um, smooth, so you get a lot of swing. Yeah. And you need no sandpaper. No, don't give me sandpaper. <laughs> That's good though. How how bad is your cricket team? Oh, it's shocking. Well, the, the, you, you can't respect them. It's just awful. It's kind of weird watching them be all happy and smiley when you just know like they want to be assholes. And I liked them being assholes because it was like you could just hate them. And now they're just it's quite cringy watching them trying to be all friendly. <laughs> I gave up watching cricket many years ago. All right. Oh no, I love cricket. Love it. Uh, we were going to talk about lots of things in US one years waiting for you, but I could pretty happily sit here just touching on the eclectic topics for another 25 minutes if you liked. Um, give me a couple more and then give me, give me another eclectic topic and then I'd be there. Well, well let's go for something a bit of a cliche cycling term and when you go training, like talk to Richie a few years ago just in advance of the tour and he was telling me how many metres he'd climbed that week and I remember publishing it and there was a huge reaction on social media because it was heaps. Oh, yeah. What's your biggest week? Oh, like like training, like yeah, hours. Yeah, no, 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 not hours. How how far up? How oh many shit! I wouldn't know. Meters? I wouldn't have a clue. What's your best day? I do know that. I did it in Andorra before the Vuelta. I think I did like five thousand eight hundred meters. Okay. But people can fact check it. Fact check it on Strava. I think it was like five six or five eight or something like that. Okay. Sometime in like July August last year. And where did you end up? Where, what altitude? Was it three thousand. So I started at two thousand. And I just did, I can't even tell you where I went. I went, I did seven massive climbs in Andorra. Okay. And some of them, you know, so you go down to like 800 and then back up to like 2.2 or 2.3 mm-hmm. and just did that all day. So from my house in Andorra, back to my house in Andorra, seven hours or something and just pushing the whole day as hard as I could. Okay. Are you a, are you a spinner or a grinder on the climbs? Do you hit a big gear or a nice light one? I don't know if you can say I'm a grinder in the current climate. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> um, no, nah, big gear. Big gear. Yeah, which is quite strange. But I, th- I, I had a, I actually think I um, developed that because I got the stitch. So to try keep the heart rate down and the breathing low, because you know it was like a breathing yeah. thing. I was like, I started developing just pushing a really massive gear. So I cruise around at like eighty a lot of the time. Okay. Especially in Andorra because I just am too lazy to put a smaller chain ring on and I, it's steep and I ride around on a 25 or something and so I'm just grinding away on like, yeah. But you know, like, it's weird. Like, you know, last night I was cruising around like 120 RPM. So it just depends if, I, if I'm going fast and I feel fresh, I can spin it. But there's no, I don't really have a set number or a cadence. I just kind of, as I get more tired, I just start pushing a slightly bigger gear and just loading up the knees. You've already sold me on New Zealand. Everyone seems friendly over there. I'll go to Nelson. They say they're the best trails in the Southern Hemisphere. I've heard that. Possibly Someone's the world. Possibly the world. I, I would I would say that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I've only ridden. I mean, compared to any stuff, in, I still do some like downhill stuff in Andorra, like I do the on the bike park. You know, Okay. You, so you've got a dual suspension downhill. Yeah, yeah, like full, like like an enduro, like um, you can ride it up a hill, but it's just a bit of a slog. Okay. So. Twenty nine or obviously. No, twenty seven and a half. Okay. But I've actually been really big on the e bikes lately in New Zealand. I've just been smashing e bikes on the rest days. Okay. 
So you can still do like an hour, hour and a half. But you That's can what just... we were talking about, like what you do to relax. So oh, now yeah. you just go out on the e-bike. Yep, on my rest days I do e-bikes instead of riding, um, get a good hook up from Village Cycles and they send me out on an e-bike okay. a couple of times a week minute, or just whenever I feel like it. Yeah. And, um, and it's awesome. And you cut sick and get big air? No, I'm, I try and keep wheels on the ground at the moment. Oh. But, well, especially on an e-bike because they're about 25 kilo or yeah, whatever yeah. and they don't jump well. Oh. But we had a few good... You know, we do down a tail whip and then the back would just keep going and then you'd land backwards. And it would yeah, I don't know. I, I did a couple of big wall rides and lost. I had a bit of a bingle, so... Okay. Shh. Don't tell the boss. Yeah. Don't, don't want to hear that. No, take that out. Take that out. <laughs> so anyway, wheels on the ground policy, especially this time of year because I remember like Gero yeah. broke his collarbone a couple of years ago. Yeah. And he was, he was just riding normally, you know. But the thing is like, it's no more dangerous than riding on the road. Actually, riding in Australia or New Zealand, the road's so much more dangerous. Yeah. So many bogans and just, or just obliviousness to cyclists that, yeah. yeah. I don't know what they're doing. I think they're just opening 4X cans or something like that. <laughs> As we said before, you got to see this one year. Yes, I'm very late. Thanks very much. So it's really good. I've got to shake your hand in front of the camera. Alright. I better get this thing off.